Welcome, what's up? Welcome back to the CEO Pulse Podcast, where you get the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. Guess what? All right, we have Alicia Jared. She's coming in all the way from Melbourne, Australia. All right, she's yeah. doing business in the states, all the way from halfway across the world. She's a serial entrepreneur. Uh, she's the uh, founder for, of uh, Global Citizen Land Scouts and Supercharged Offers. All right, um, you uh, you speak all over the place. You're an international real estate investor. Uh, you do a lot of coaching and training on leadership and business all together. So I'm excited to pick your brain, um, especially because I mean, you you come from a from a, a a a place, I mean, technically, if you're all the way in the other side of the world, it should be really hard to do business, right? You would think, wouldn't you? You would think, right? Like that's <laughs> the general really consensus, <laughs> right? So I want to. Uh, I mean, there's so many different topics that I want to pick your brain on. Yep. So uh, with that, welcome to the show. Welcome thank to the you. podcast. Thanks, thank you for Rafael, being here. and thank you so much for having me here. I know it just uh, happened so nicely that we got to meet the other week, and I'm here in yeah. Phoenix, and we were like, let's do a live, let's oh, do it, yeah. and see where it goes. So I'm excited. Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a pleasure having you. Um, so give us a little bit of, of context. Okay. So you're spending, uh, you have six weeks that you're spending here in Phoenix yep. and, and, uh, you know, we took the, you know advantage of you and, and, and really brought you in for a sit down. Right. Yep. But thank you for, for sharing, um, the, uh, the time right with us, uh, and give us a little bit of context on what, uh, you know, your background, your career, how'd you end up, you know, doing business in the States and, uh, you know, especially from, from the other, yeah. you know. Let's get Side comfy, the folks. There's a lot to tell. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if uh, if I go back, similarly, you and I have actually got pretty similar backgrounds. I don't mm. know if you, you're aware, but I started studying psychology back mm. in the day. I got into organizational development rather mm. than organizational psychology. Yeah. Um, but I guess I always knew, Rafa, that, that there was this this need in me to want to do more and be yeah. more and not always work for someone else. So um, from doing organizational development into consulting, into leadership development and having my own practice around that, I just kept thinking there's got to be more to this world and more to doing business and, you know, waking up every morning and wanting to do something that really yeah. inspires you so that those light bulb moments happen. And uh, so about um, about a decade into having my own consulting practice, again, I was in that that zone of always exchanging my time for money. Yeah. And you get to mm. that stage in business, folks, as well, that often people buy you, not your business, not your product, all these things, but they buy you. So I was in that that situation that I could only scale so far because no matter what I did product-wise, I'd invariably created this business that I was the brand. Yeah. Now that's, if I was to do that again, I would totally do that differently. Um, so then came the opportunity to get into real estate. Now, don't get me wrong, we've uh, my, my business partner, Matt, and I, we have invested in Australia, but there's only so much you can do in Australia and only so far that you can take real estate there um, due to a number of things that we can discuss. So the opportunity came up to explore doing houses in the US. Mm. And, um, and this was about seven or eight years ago now. And I thought, why not? Let's give that a try. Yeah. So we did and we set up everything remotely from the others across the pond, as they yeah. say, the other side of, of the world. We engaged some boots on the ground over here and we started on our first house, sight unseen. And and from there, the rest is history. Well, and wait, wait, wait. Let, let me let me inter interject there. Yeah. First. Uh, you said I mean, you said it lightly, right? We started on our first house from from Australia, from the other side yeah, of the from, world. Yeah. Sight unseen. Well, what does that mean? Was that a fix and flip? Was, was that like, yep, it was a fix and flip. So we knew what our budget was. Yeah. Yeah. We knew what we wanted our ARV to be and we knew how much profit we needed to make on the deal. So we knew what our numbers were to make the deal work. Yeah. And I guess early on we weren't wedded to the type of property that it was. As long as the numbers worked right. and, and the rehab was going to work, let's go for it. Yeah. So we, we actually introduced ourselves to quite a few realtors at the time. So part of the course that we were doing at the time, they said, pick up the phone and start speaking to realtors. And so we did. Other side <laughs> of the world, we're like, and you can imagine being a realtor, right? Getting yeah. this kind of phone call, folks. Hi, my name's Alicia. I'm calling from Australia. We're wanting to invest in the US. Um, we've got some money to spend. We want to do some fix and flips. Can you call me back? Yeah. Guess how many real estate agents we called? I mean, 100? About, about 20. Uh -huh. So it was all done in the one day. So I just listed them all because we, we knew our market, which is Jacksonville, Florida. So I just knew mm -hmm. jumping on, looking at investor-friendly realtors. Guess how many called us back? None. One. One. One out of 20. One. And he's still wow. on our team today. Wow. 5% so, hit rate there. <laughs> exactly. So I know, right? So he called us back. We had a great conversation. His name's Michael Cassidy for anyone looking for a realtor in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, he called us back. We talked through what it is that we wanted to do. 
And the very next day he came back to us with a list of properties. Now, if I had have bought through my heart and not through my head, I would have looked at every single property and gone, hell no. But when you go through your head yeah. and analyse it through the numbers, the numbers made sense. So we bought our first property um, for like $17,000, did a first fix and flip. We, we used him to put it in our team remotely and we paid him as like a project manager as well as yeah. our realtor, um, put the project team in place. We, whilst that fix and flip was going over, going on, we flew over to the US. We bought a whole bunch of other properties with him. Um, not a, you know, a handful of properties. Yeah. And we got going on our next projects and, and the rest, you know, we did land for, sorry, we did vac single family homes, including a, a triplex in there. We did that for the first 18 months. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we switched asset classes to vacant land. Wow. So, I mean, you still moved quite, you know, fast for eight, you know, 18 months buying multiple properties. Yeah. And, yeah, um, we did. Uh, were, how were you funding these? Were they private money, hard money? Uh, we did. So some of them capital? were self-funded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of them were self-funded. Uh, one of the bigger deals that we did, we got private money involved. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing doing stuff from the other side of the world is we don't have a social security number. So get, guess what we're called, Raphael? Um, we're called aliens. Aliens, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's, that's actually the technical name for us. We're called aliens. You're an alien. So we can that's, do everything else in this country except have a social security number and we're called aliens. They, so that, that's why you're crushing it. You're an alien. That's exactly right. Yeah, I've got green things coming out of here. So, um, so then when it came time to do a bigger deal that we needed yeah. money for, the only thing we could do is private money because we can't lend without having a, a social security number. Anyway, we found a great private money lender, went in on a deal, but the deal was not great. It was mm. the worst deal we'd ever done. And that's when we changed asset classes and went into something else. So lots of lessons learned there, that's yeah. for sure. Well, I mean, I think I think uh, it's it's one of the, like people usually wait. Right. And we see that all the time, especially if you have students who are coaching, doing consulting. Um, people usually want to wait until they're ready. They have all the, you know, the T's crossed. What does ready and the look like, right? It. They, like it's, it's a myth. <laughs> It, it's it, it is. the the ready monster is, is never gonna get you. We we didn't um, have a bank account set up yet. We we didn't even yeah. have our ITINs yet. We were just like the first deal we did. We just had a goal in mind and we just went for it. I mean, and that's really. I mean, that's the entrepreneur. You know, you learn as you, you go. Story, right? Yeah. Like you you uh you kind of take the leap. You jump off the cliff and then you build a plane on the way down. Um, we actually say in our business we're building a plane at the same time we're flying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Actually, we use that like twice <clears throat> a week at least. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think, I mean, that's what it comes down to, right? First off, you got to have the uh, the uh, the desire, right? You talked about, you know, what wakes you up, you know. what want to get up in the drive, morning and yeah, go, that when, excites me. Yeah, yeah I want to yeah, learn exactly. more. Like, it's got to be obnoxious, right? If you have, and I think my, my wife can probably attest to this, but when I wake up in the morning, I have like, you know, there's there's fire in my gut. Like, yeah. it's like, okay, cool, I want to crush it. Yeah. I went, you know, went to bed dead tired because I'm working on a project or whatever in the morning. I'm ready to go and I'm, I'm, I'm fired up. Yeah. And I think when we find that kind of stuff, right, we find that level of possibility. Uh, and and more importantly, we feel like it's within reach. It's yes. doable. Uh, a lot of things change, right? The that drive, does. the tenacity, the willpower, um, the limitations, like, what well, you know, pfft. They, they 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 get smaller. Oh, they do quite a bit. I they mean, do. Yeah. And this is it, it's very impressive, right? And and I'm not sure like what your 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 uh, context or, or complete background is, but I mean to think and then just to the, j jump into this idea that okay, cool, I can invest um, in in the states. I don't know. Let's flip a couple of properties. Like see how get, it goes, right? In in our own backyard, people have cold feet doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I so, do. I do. So. And we speak to our customers all the time. Um, Supercharged offers being a marketing company in, in real estate. We speak to customers that are like, I only want to do deals in my backyard. I'm yeah. like, wow. you don't need to. Why? Yeah. If the numbers make sense, go elsewhere. You know? yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as you've got the right due diligence in place. And and yes, I think being that entrepreneurial mindset, you need to take risks. But they can be semi-calculated risks, yeah. right? And if you know what your 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 What's the right word I'm looking for here? Where your backstop is. So when things aren't going the right direction, yeah. what do you do to pivot? You know, where's your decision points when money gets to certain tolerances or right. your deals get to certain levels? Like you've got to always be planning ahead for those things. And if you don't, <clears throat> that's when you'll kind of fall over and be like, this is too hard. You said backstop. Did you come to a backstop when you hit that 18 month mark and you yeah. switched over to land? We did. We did. So the last property that we did, and by the way, folks, there's a learning in here. Um, Houses are awesome. 
but don't go out outside of your strategy. So here's where we went wrong. We had a very clear strategy on single family homes that were what I would call affordable housing, Mm -hmm. um, that we, we really had a passion as well of wanting to go into communities where banks had walked away and you know, we all know what yeah. happened after 2008. And even in, um, this was in like, you know, seven years ago, so that the crash had well and truly happened, right? But coming to the US, I, I was so disheartened when I walked down every single street. Um, we do Florida. So every place I went to, every street I walked down, I'm like, there's a house we can help. There's a house we can help. There's a house we can help. <laughs> yeah. Like there was still so much opportunity. Yeah. And uh, the last house though we strayed away from our strategy. So our strategy was affordable housing with a certain budget in mind, a certain ARV that we were aiming for and putting families back into homes and even seller financing some of them. We then walked past one house that was probably, I'm not kidding when I say nine, ten times the price of what we would normally do. We're like, oh, this is a great house. We can do so much with this. It's fantastic. Let's get a lender involved. Let's kind of, let's do this amazing yeah. property. And we shouldn't have strayed from our strategy because then we we were out of our depth. We didn't know what we were doing. And it was also at that time when everyone wanted to be a fix and flipper. So mm. go back seven or eight years ago, everyone thought they could flip a house. So getting contractors and keeping them was hard. We had people breaking into the house and stealing stuff because we had equipment in there. Um, And long story short, what should have been a three-month project turned into a 12-month project. And after all of that stress, we've just broke even. Yeah. And that's when I went, maybe we need to think about the different type of asset class we do, being that we're doing this from the other side of the world. Now, I would still love to do houses, but now I know so much more than what I knew then, I would approach it differently. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny, um, not ha ha funny, but, but it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we, we had lots of laughter, but there was lots of tears as well. <laughs> no, no, uh, so I had a, I have a similar story. Like my, my first flip, actually, I didn't know what I was doing. I wanted to allocate some funds that I had built or that I had, you know, put together through my yep. transportation business. And I was breaking into real estate in 2009. Uh, I go in there and I was like, I know how to swing a hammer. So I, I take on this rehab project by myself. Yep. I was like, no, nah, I can fix the floor i mean i used to work in construction growing up in high school and college you know what you're doing i was like yeah i got (laughs) this i'll fix the kitchen uh and i go in there and i spent six months on this thing and it's like i mean i got i got fed up with it right i was doing all the work i mean i outsourced a couple of things that i had to outsource just for permit sake Uh, but i was under that mentality like no like also i'll do it myself and it, it was not my highest and best. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, six months going into it, I made, I think I made sh- just shy of 1500 bucks on it. Wow. So, so, so yeah. And then I'm thinking like, this is my first, like, how do people survive in real estate? Yeah, I know, right? I know. <laughs> and I think, I think inherent in this is, is a bit of a, a learning aha moment, right? Yeah. When you're trying to build something big and big doesn't have to be, you know, multi, multi million dollar business. Big might be that you're just making 50,000 a month and that sets, sets you for the rest of your life. I don't yeah. know. Everyone's got their own goal. Goals. the road to that is that you can't do it all on your own yeah and we've learned that a lot in our yep. business too and i think you know is so it? many people are like oh, i'll jump on the tools and do this no yeah it because we know how to do it doesn't mean we should bingo like, I, I think that is what the, you know that's yeah. what it comes down to right um oh, sorry bingo is a bit of an aussie word sorry folks <laughs> <laughs> the uh so is it a cultural thing i mean because i know for example for me coming you know having a hispanic background like we're used to doing everything ourselves yeah uh we don't we, we don't pay for coaching we don't go out there and get educated because we know everything like for the most part right like i think the newer generations are, are breaking into that new definitely you know school of thought uh, but if you go into into you know past generations like it's, it's the work ethic is through the roof, oh, very yeah. committed. It's all there, but we're used to kind of doing, you know, we there's almost like this stigma to, you know, going out there and asking for help. Oh, yeah. Right. Not only that, but there's a stigma, especially in Australian culture. And, and I hate to say this because I love my own country, but we have what's called the tall poppy syndrome. Tall poppy being when you mm. want to grow too big and too tall, let's snip you off. You know, mm. don't do not do anything too crazy. Yeah. So even us you going. You sound and- like you're the overseas Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're aliens. <laughs> you're, 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 we have that same thing. I mean, we don't call it a tall puppy syndrome, but uh, it exists, you know, it right? happens. It's like, and, and I think growing up, it does happen. I love that. <laughs> See, every day you learn a new thing. Australia, but, overseas Mexicans. Yep, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but um, the only thing is, we don't have really good Mexican food, so I come here for that. Yeah. But um, where were we? Um, growing tall up. Tall puppy, yeah. Yeah, tall puppy. Uh, growing up, 
my mum and dad both had their own businesses, but um, mum was a hairdresser, dad worked as a, a computer technician, so they were both tradies is what we would mm-hmm. call them. Absolutely great at what they did, but essentially they'd created jobs for themselves. Yeah. That never went anywhere because of how, you know, there's only so much that they can do with their time and their, their skills and expertise. Right. They worked so hard, so hard. But we lived in, in the country, so in the outback is what we would call it. And it was the done thing to work hard, but no one ever got over a certain level. But I always knew that there was kind of more out there. <clears throat> and I think come to your point, when I first started doing coaching, so I, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins. I've done all of his programs over the years. And it was because of that, Same because area. of me stretching myself into a new way of thinking that then, like we were talking before we pushed record, right, when you start to have this new way of thinking or new things that you're exploring, other things get put in front of you. And we would never be here doing real estate if I didn't do that coaching because that led me to go and see other people speak and look into other avenues. And now I just think, you know, wow, when we stretch ourselves outside of that comfort zone, so many things open up. And the 100%, it's it's not even... I feel like it, it's <clears throat> there's multiple things that come into effect, right? Yeah, we do have that. Uh, I mean, we're, we're breaking into different perspectives. Uh, we're seeing things in a whole different, you know, pattern. Um, but also, when you go to those places, when you go to those rooms, you have people that have, you know, they're coming from different, you know, lanes. There are different time periods in their life, and and they're willing to share. You have different conversations yeah. than the conversations that we're used to on a regular basis, right? Uh, and it, like that happens, it plants seeds, it plants ideas, it plants possibilities of connection. Um, at you know, Tony Robbins um, events. Uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> At Tony Robbins events, we've um, like I've met people there that became you know friends. Same. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and we've done you know business together yep. through the years and whatnot. So, so or, it, or and, people and, that you can pick up the phone to and go, hey, I've got an idea, and yeah. not have that idea shot down. Or no, you can't do that. Yeah. It's the opposite. It's how can I help? How do we exactly? Know, how do we do a brainwave on leading this? Leading with group? value, yeah. you know, type of deal. But uh, you know, it all embraces that similar mindset, and I think that when you're in that space. Uh, a lot of things happen. Why? Because you're collaborating. It's not just Correct. your idea anymore or your single, you know, train of thought. It's, the group it, it's your um, your train of thought, that person's train of thought, and then the collective train of thought between the two of you because things happen when yep. you know people are, are in this room. What is that saying? That your <clears throat> your net worth is your network? Oh yeah. Yeah. So true. So so, true. so yeah, you see it. So there, there's so many different, you know, I I, I don't want to say benefits, but I think like s- so much magic to being in a room of 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 a a, a collective group of people who are in the similar uh, similar you know growth mindset, yeah, right? Correct. Uh, I, and I mean that's gonna tee you up. It's gonna tee you up for for bigger and better things that yeah. perhaps we're not seeing. Uh, can I just touch on one thing that you've said? I think yeah. it's really interesting, and that is growth mindset. So you know, you and I being our psychology type backgrounds and stuff, I know the work of Professor Carol Dweck, which is on growth versus fixed mindset. I think that's one thing that I see often in in the real estate in, investing space is. People have a goal in mind, but the yeah. self-talk that goes on is so fixed. I can't, it won't work, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm too old to learn new things, all of that stuff that happens. And I'll be really honest with you in this moment that I still have that. Like a lot of people yeah. look at me and go, oh, you're so growth-minded and you're so this and you're so that. But the reality is when we are learning something new, often those old things still come into play and that fixed mindset is still there. Um, the difference between those that do and those that don't is they have that conversation with themselves around it and be like, I know you're there for a reason and you're telling me to stay safe, but let's stretch ourselves a little bit here stop and see it. what we can do. Yes, yeah, stop <laughs> it. In a voice, stop it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those those are, I mean, we have patterns, right? We have engrams. We have just, it's called psychological triggers. Uh, but every time we push ourselves and put ourselves in a new, uh, you know, challenge or a new you know level that we want to get to or whatnot like those same insecurities that we felt when we were little and and i don't know we're you know yeah being bullied in the playground i mean you name it so many different experiences right those same feelings come back up why because you're putting yourself in the face of of another potential threat quote yep. unquote right it's something that's uncomfortable it's something that's outside of the realm of, you know of stuff that you know yeah um and, and what happens we go into default uh, you know emotions default thinking default triggers and that stuff is always there i think the ability or or, or the um the you know, the awareness, the, I think, to push yeah, through it. Yeah. yeah, the awareness to push through, uh, through it is really what uh, what you know makes make it makes it stick, right? Yep. Like it's not about you know completing this. At least I haven't been able to reach that point because I get you know self doubt and all that stuff all the time. Feel but yeah. but the ability to to you know 
be in Zen mode in the face of you know uh, fear or in the face of threats and yep. like and not feel anything. Like I I, I don't know. I, I just know it's that okay, happen. cool. Like shit, that's yep. there, but yep. I'm gonna I mean, I'm gonna push through. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I spoke a couple of weeks ago at a conference in Houston, and it was so awesome. Right up to the minute I get on stage, imposter syndrome is right there front and center. Yeah. Like, should you be doing this? Are you the yeah. right person to get up there and talk? You know, do you have enough experience, et cetera? And then you get up there and you do your thing and you get off stage and you're like, hell yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I belong up there. <laughs> but, you know, it happens to us all the time. And mm. I just, I think the message I want to give to your listeners, if, if, if they're thinking of that self-doubt is it's there for a reason just to test you time yeah. and time. Do you really want this? Yeah. Do you really want this? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I mean, there's highs, there's lows, there's, you know, uh, sometimes we see, and I think, you know, most of the time we're seeing or paying attention mm. uh, to uh, to the highlights of people, right? Mm. Like, oh, they're doing great. This, You know, they're oh, yeah. so good at this and they're so good and at that. And look at them on social media, like, all oh, polished, right? So <laughs> beautiful. Yes. All the, you know, reels and the, the deals and the successes and this and that. Like, there's a lot of shit that goes on behind the Oh, screen. yeah. Um, but, and I, I don't know about you. Know, you. I don't know one person that's gotten there that hasn't got some battle scars. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're like, you almost take pride in them after a while. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, that's another one. Yeah. But what, what happens is like one thing that I noticed and, and you know, is that my, my threshold uh, threshold for, for tolerance. Um, I mean, gets better, right? Like mm. now I see challenges that I know, or, or I go through stuff that I know, like, you know, five years ago would have, you know, it would have broken me for yeah. a week. Um, hundred percent. And, and it's not that, that, you know, we, I feel like we get we get stronger as we go along, right? We do. Our, yeah. infor- our internal fortitude it, it gets really, get stronger. And, yeah, it doesn't yeah. really get easier. We just get stronger. And I feel like that's, you know, on the emotional, you know, realm, on the emotional Correct. side of things, on the connections and, the you know, the, uh, um, you know, the resources and all that stuff just improve, right? Yeah. So we're better, better capable as time goes uh, to deal with, you know, some of the stuff that normally in the past yeah. would have just freaked us out. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's almost like a rite of, of, of passage, I think. Like you you have to go through certain things to to get to that point. I agree. I agree. And, and um, <clears throat> we were actually speaking with uh, one of our friends last night. We were here in, in Phoenix out for dinner and said, you know, bigger business, more money, more problems. Yeah. And I think that's that's true, right? But those problems, because of the network that we're creating all around yeah. ourselves and, and those things, they, they do become somewhat easier to handle because you don't feel like you're as, as, as alone in them as what you yeah. do when you're first starting. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. So so tell me, you switched, um, I mean, you, you came to real estate, you did really good, and then you hit this, this snag and then you switched strategies to land, we right? did. Yeah. Um, Walk me through the process. What happened afterwards? Like, was it all just, you know, rainbows and sunshine? No, never. (laughs) (laughs) If it was rainbows and sunshine, everyone would be doing it right. But um, it it wasn't that difficult, though. And the reason why it wasn't that difficult, I think if you can do a single family home that has the termites, the tenants, the toilets, the trash, all the problems that come with it. A piece of vacant land doesn't have a lot of that stuff. You know, it's a blank canvas. So when we switch to vacant land, yes, it has its own nuances, but they're different. So in a house where you've got to fix all of those physical elements, in vacant land, often it's the non-physical elements. It's the paper trail that you've got to fix. It's the clearing title. It's doing probates. It's doing a quick claim deed um, to make sure that the title is marketable. It's... um, you know, dealing with the neighbours on getting easements for the properties. It's, it's all that yeah. stuff that's often about shuffling the paper and the relationships as opposed to the physical asset itself. Yeah. So doing houses into vacant land was actually a really easy transition. However, it hasn't come with its challenges. Like we all, we all get it. First time we ever did a campaign for vacant land and um, we got everything ready and we were like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. I think I might have told you this story the other week. And we got our first 2,000 mailers out the door and we're waiting for the phone calls and we're like, Phone's gonna ring. It's gonna land. Phone's gonna, gonna land. ring. Phone's gonna ring. A couple of weeks went by. No, nope, phone's not ringing. We're like, damn! What did we do? What <laughs> happened? And then we get this phone call out of the blue from this woman in in Jacksonville, and she's like, "Have you stolen my identity?" We're like, "What?" And lo and behold, what had happened is we got one digit wrong on the phone number oh instead my God. of like. 904-397-4128. It was like um, 82. We turned Ooh. it around. Typo. Typo, folks. That, that was and an I expensive know, typo. I don't know how many times we checked that letter <laughs> before it went out. Anyway, to turn it around, this woman was amazing. And because I'm so lovely, I was just like, how can we make this up to you? And I just started talking with her. Turns out she worked in sales. And I said, all right, well, this is going to happen. Like you're obviously getting phone calls yeah. for our business and you're going to still get phone calls for the next few weeks. So 
can I get you to work for us part time over the next few weeks and we'll, we'll loop you in on these deals and we'll reward wow. you. And she was like, okay. So then on a daily basis, she was just Are emailing serious? me through all of these deals and leads. And we got she our became first a lead deals manager. You hired a lead yeah, manager. On our first deal. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's also about when those obstacles happen, what do you do to turn it around? Yeah. How do you think of it a little bit differently? Um, and then the rest, you know, we're still doing land now. Six years on, we've been doing vacant land. We've had some amazing deals. We've now taken it from, you know, understanding the smaller principles of doing vacant land into now big properties that are in the millions that we're subdividing and yeah. got lenders involved. And so you can really go in, down a number of different strategies with land and we love it. Mm. I mean, that <laughs> that's, <laughs> no, that's right. hilarious, right? Going in, you know, from a mistake to an asset, really. Like it's, it's uh, a lot of it is, is, is what, it, you know, a lot of that happens as we're trying to build yeah. businesses that we don't necessarily have a, a clear, you know, blueprint for. Um, Correct. So you, uh, you went in and you've been doing that for the last, what you said, six, six years? Six years. Yep. Six years. Yeah. Um, is that person still with you guys or I'm just curious? No, she's not. She, she oh, went okay. back to her full-time <clears throat> job after that, but <laughs> okay. much, much to my distress, but we, we now have a full-time sales team in, the, yeah. in that business. We've got two customer service people, full-time salesperson that manages all of the, you know, escalations from sellers and buyers and negotiates. We've got mm -hmm. our title company in there. We've got our same realtor from day one, wow. same realtor that's on our team. Um, and we've got our boots on the ground people. So, and we've just stuck to a particular market because I think as well, when you're getting into any of these businesses, a lot of people try and spread themselves thin, even, yeah. even across, I heard you talking before about county selection and data selection with one of your, your students. Once you start to master an area, go from, you know, harvesting that area to really farming that area. Yeah. You know, what more can you do? Because then your boots on the ground, especially if you're doing it in a different location, you can really get a lot more efficiencies in your business, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's it, land is it's also one of those things that it's not necessarily the sexiest thing that pops up when oh, you're no. talking, you know, when you're talking about real estate. So I think it goes. People drive past it, it right? Yeah, Don't people, even think yeah, about it. Exactly. It goes unnoticed <laughs> uh, quite a bit. I've, since, uh, I've seen some killer deals happen, though, in land stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is the second time today that land conversation pops really? up. Really? Second time. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking about that during breakfast. Um, with, uh, with, uh, my dispo. So yeah, that's interesting. There you go. Um, <clears throat> so that, and then you have the land and, um, a company and then you opened up a marketing company. So we was did. that, did you see an opportunity there and then just kind of leveraged did. that yeah. into this other, um, business 100%. Model? Yeah. So when we first, uh, even when we were doing houses, we struggled with all the different components that you need to make up your business. Yeah. Same when we switched to vacant land, we had to go to one place to get our data, one place to do a website for us, one place to build a funnel, you know, another place to, to do our printing for all of our mailing. Mm. And then, you know, it, it was just all over the place. And, yeah. and we were just noticing, particularly when we started the land, because it's a lot more marketing consistency that, that we needed. We were just noticing that, not only was it disjointed, but we were starting to get really inconsistent. And one thing I know for sure in, in this industry as a real estate investor in any asset class, you got to keep marketing and keep that pipeline full. Oh, yeah. Because the minute that <clears throat> pipeline starts to dry up. It's the death of the business. 100%. It's the death of the yeah. business. And we were seeing that. So we were having, um, trying to do it in compartmentalized if you like we were having good months and then yeah. bad months because nothing was there and then a good month and then yeah. a bad month and we're like got to get off this roller coaster man this is not working for <laughs> us so we just looked out there for marketing services that could do everything that we needed and couldn't find it and mm. we thought you know what why don't we do this ourselves we're real estate investors ourselves we know what a real estate investor needs so hence we pretty much just started out by selfishly building a system for ourselves yeah. so that we could implement stuff in our own business. That started to get results. And we were part of a mastermind group at the time and a few people there were like, stuff you're doing? Can, yeah. you, can you do this for us? I want it. And we yeah. thought, maybe we're onto something here. Yeah. So, you know, fast forward four years, Supercharged Offers is now working with more than 200 real estate investors in nine countries, all doing deals in the U.S., Mm. Most of our customers are US based, but we got a lot of people around the world now that we're attracting that just through me talking and podcasting, they're like, maybe I could do this. So I love that we're instilling that belief in others that, you know, maybe I could do this. What's so clarify that for me a little bit. So now uh, during uh, or through supercharged offers, you guys, you guys are doing 
Uh, is it digital outreach or, or it, it's a combination? So we're doing <clears throat> this end to end where first of all we're we're working on customers with their strategy because mm -hmm. a lot of people, as I'm sure you you would have too, people are like, I want to do ten deals a month and I want you yeah. know twenty thousand dollars profit for each. Well, that's great. Yeah. Let's reverse engineer what that looks like for your business. How much marketing do you need to do? Oh. What's your conversion rate need to be? What does your response rate need to look like and how are you going to nurture your, your leads and your deals? So first thing we do is work on their strategy. Once we've got that strategy down pat, then it's really about the implementation. So I guess the distinction between you being an educator yeah. and, and you also do implementation stuff too, I know, we're an implementer. You need to come to us with a baseline knowledge of what you want to do in this business, okay? Then we'll get to work implementing. So we do all of your data data cleansing, data scrubbing, parsing, getting your data really ready, enriching your data. A lot of people out there don't know what to do with data. Yeah. So we've got a whole dedicated data team. <coughs> then we do your direct <coughs> mail. In conjunction with the, with direct mail, we're doing digital marketing. So we're building out that whole digital footprint from custom websites to socials to running ads. So that's all running at the same time the direct mail is going. And there's some integrations in there that make sure that you're out there a lot. Is that uh, for the purpose of uh, PPC leads type stuff? On it's the actually not, not pay per click or? so much. It's um, <coughs> We're building audiences. So let's just say that for someone in vacant land over the next few months, they're mailing like 30,000 people. Yeah, Pretty common to do that. Those 30,000 people, we take that data and we social match it and find out where do they live in an online world. Mm. It's pretty scary these days how much you can find out about people online, right? It's insane. So we can find out where all the social profiles are. Then in addition to those social profiles, we'll build an audience around them to try and like capture anyone else as well. Yeah. So we're building audiences and we're pushing ads out rather than pay per click with ads coming in. So the difference mm. between that and, and most people would understand is pay per click, if someone's searching, they'll find you, click on you, you pay for that click, right? Right. Pushing ads out is going to people who have the property that you want because we know them. Now let's try and put stuff in front of them that gets them to go, oh, yeah, I do have vacant land. Yeah. Maybe I do want to talk to someone about potentially selling. So it's it's a push ad as opposed to a pay-per-click ad. Mm. We can do pay-per-click <coughs> as well, though. So yeah. we do a whole bunch of other stuff with SEO optimization, blog writing, all of those things that you can do to optimize and do pay-per-click too. Um, I mean, it, it's a big shift, right, from, from real estate investment, flipping houses, uh, pivoting into land and then now and now marketing know, breaking, yeah now marketing <laughs> um, but they they all connect like I uh, when I was I don't know I'm thinking about like 2015 uh, 15 14 um, I was in this men's group and we would meet up for breakfast um, every Thursday at 7 30 in the morning at this breakfast place um, and it, it was five of us and we would talk about you know Okay, you know this is where I'm at. You know, at that, you know, from a human, you know, space and a professional, you know, space. This is where I'm at. I want to yeah, do this, this, and that. And I always had like different ideas, and I just didn't know how they were going to connect. Um, and then uh, there's there's a point to the story, I promise. Uh, so so they would tease me, and like they, like if you're watching, you know who you're talking <laughs> about. Uh, they would tease me, they would bully me. Uh, no, but great friends. You know, some of my best friends. And it's like, oh, Rafael just came in, uh, you know, for what with, with two, more, two more businesses <laughs> today. And they, you know, at one point, I don't know, I had like nine or 11 registered companies. And like, I was doing a lot of stuff, right? Um, but like in my head, like it all made sense. Okay, like somehow, some way, this thing's going to click. Like one thing leads me to the other one, then to the other one, and yeah. then to the other one. What ended up happening through the years, I do on multiple companies, not eleven, but but it's uh, it all it all consolidated. Yeah. Uh, meaning that what you learn at one stage is going to be useful in the next you know yes. stage of your professional career. Uh, and I mean, from the pattern that I'm seeing here, okay, cool. You saw this evolution. You saw you started with an opportunity. You took a risk, right? You leveraged that. You saw a pivot, moved into that. You took the knowledge, um, you know, from from traditional real estate and, and residential stuff, plugged it into the systems and the processes of the land. And then you saw a gap in there and plugged the, no, uh, the knowledge of, of that market, that industry into the digital space. And now you're rolling. I mean, you have, you're have you doing business all over the world now with people. So. We are. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty exciting. <clears throat> and might I add, I don't have a background in real estate. I don't have a background in marketing. Yeah. But when you know what good looks like and you know what, what you want your business to look yeah. like, you can go and learn it, you know. You, yeah. It's not like you're an overnight expert. Like we had a lot to learn. Um, but even now, if I look at our portfolio of products, we're about to launch two more products. Remember one of them we showed you last week. That's purely from an evolution of what our customers have been yeah. asking for and a gap in the market. Yeah. So I love that your story is, that really resonates with me <laughs> as well, that 
And and I've got to credit my business partner Matt here because he is the wizard behind the curtain. Yeah. I'll I'll be very customer facing and I'll have all these great conversations. I'm like, someone so mentioned something today. Can we look at that? He goes behind the curtain and he's like, Yeah, how do we how do we formulate this <laughs> and comes this up out. with it? And we're like, Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And you know, not everything works. Um, we we've certainly had things that we've put out to the market that didn't work. Um, when the whole ringless voice thing happened, we had to start ringing now.com and we yeah. were doing ringless voice for people, but we hadn't mastered it yet, yeah. but we gave it a go. And that led into, okay, well, if that doesn't work, what else do we do? So I, I just love that word evolution because nothing ever stays the same. Yeah, it, it's nothing stagnant. It, 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 it's really not. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that you leverage or, or go deep into it also is, is leadership, mm. right? So tell me about that. I mean, obviously, I mean, you you have a strong sense of leadership. You guys have a, a team um, through, I mean, it's it's scattered in, in, you said. Five countries. Five different countries, right? Yep. So, I mean, it, it takes a, a high, you know, acuity uh, to, you know, leadership acuity to, to, you know, keep it all together and, be, you know, be performing. Yep. Still be doing the things that you guys are doing. Right? Yep. Yep. Uh, talk to me about that. Yeah. First of all, I'm a big believer that your business is nothing without your people. You yeah. can systematize everything, you know, and systems is great. And you should always start with systems, yeah. by the way, and then have the right people to run them, not yeah. the other way around. But people are pivotal to everything. And even in this this business of, of real estate, the, the one thing I always say is we're not in real estate, we're in relationships. Mm, yeah. How you build relationships with your sellers, your buyers, your contractors, your, your support team, it's all about people. Um, and I guess from a leadership perspective, I have – a bit, a bit of a methodology, if I, I can take you through it quickly. It's called the, the Raft B or B Raft methodology. goes through a, a few things. But um, even though our team is in five countries, the only people that I've ever physically met, and these team be- members have been with us for years, like our shortest team member has been two years now. Mm-hmm. Um, she's our project manager. <clears throat> the rest have been three years, five years, six and seven years. They were with us before we even went into these current businesses. We have never met them in person. It's all virtual <laughs> virtual relationships, right? The only people I've met is our realtor and our title company yeah. and our probate attorney. That's it. Um, everyone else is still virtual, but sometimes I feel closer to them than what I do other customers that I have met. Yeah. And the reason being they're part of our family. You know, we, we really get to know our team members at a, at a very intimate level. And, and when I'm on calls with them every day, it's not, okay, what have you got for me? It's how are you? What's going yeah. on? Tell me about what's happening in your life and your world. Um, and we are on calls with our team daily. Um, specific team members, we, we spend more time with than others, depending upon if they're customer facing or not. But every day there's a touch point with our team. Yeah. And they feel like they're part of our team. You know, we involve them in decisions. We involve them in feedback on products and strategy. Um, we have an idea. We take it to our team first and say, tell us what you think, guys, you know. And a lot of people call their team VAs. We don't call that on our team at all. Um, yes, some of them are employed as a VA contract, but they're customer service team, they're project managers, they're owners of different processes, they're owners of outcomes. Um, and making them feel like they've got some, you know, some skin in the game with the business too. <clears throat> I think that's that's easy to do. Um, uh, not not what you're talking about. It's easy to to, to kind of ignore the human element mm. um, a lot of times. Why? Because we only see them through screens. Especially after you know it, it got super popular after COVID, right? Yep. Where people started working from from home. People got comfortable. Um, we've had you know virtual assistants for forever um, since you know in my in my businesses and and. Um, and one thing that we've never lost sight of, and it, it's almost like a trigger point when, when, um, and I've said this before on podcasts too, but, but when people start treating, uh, you know, you know, virtual assistants as laptops, like, no, it's like the people have, you know, they have dreams, they have desires, they want to belong, they want to be part of something bigger. Yeah. Uh, and perhaps, you know, you're the vehicle for that, you know, to happen, but <clears throat> it's, I think sometimes we overcomplicate mm. the, um, uh, the, the idea of leadership, mm. and it really comes down to being a good, uh, you know, good human. Yeah, right. Like completely like, agree. How can how can I not be an asshole to this person today? Yeah, and then just empower this person to do you know whatever it is they need to do, uh, be in alignment, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I take with, you through my, my quick methodology that yeah, kind of please. speaks to that? Please, please, please. So it's made up. Uh, so it's called Raft B, and I think of it like the safety raft. Like we've all got a safety raft that we have to put out there. So the R is about um, relationships. Now, when I say that, it's not only the relationships I have with my team, but I will say to my team, you know, go and go and call our, our title company yourself. Like you have my permission and right. my, 
not only permission because <clears throat> that's not the right way to put it, right? You have my blessing. Yeah. Get on the phone and go and do that yourself because I want you to feel empowered to do yeah. that. I want you to have relationships with the same people that I have relationships no matter what level we are. Yeah. And I will happily connect, connect my team members to different customers, different experiences, different people in different networks because when we do that, not only do they, they feel more empowered but they feel more connected Yeah. because people feel connected when they're connected to others. So relationships is first. Um, the A is about accountability. We mm. have a big drive in our business around if you are empowered to do something and you're directed to do something, you are ultimately accountable. Should you choose to involve other people in getting that thing over the line to be accountable, excellent, more power to you because that's about shared ownership, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, if something doesn't happen, it, it's on you. Yeah. And I think having that level of accountability means that people do more but also they take more pride in what they do. Because they know that if they don't do it, well, we're going to have a tough conversation, which leads me to the, the F, which is feedback. Very, very big on feedback in our team. And that's just not me giving feedback to them. I want them to give feedback to us. Like I said before, when we've got a business <coughs> idea, we take it to the team and say, guys, what do you think? What are you seeing that we don't see? Um, do you think that you guys can implement mm. this or not? You know, feedback's got to go both ways. And it should never be a feeling that they could never come to us with an idea or a problem. Well, especially because they're on the front lines. They like, are. They see things that we the, don't see. Yeah, I mean, th usually the point of contact is, you know, first point of contact is them. Yep. You know, not us with, with the client, yep. you know, when they're customer facing. 100%. It, and that it, takes me to the T, which is trust. <clears throat> yeah. If you don't have trust of your people, if you don't say, I'm going to make you accountable for something and give you all the tools and things to go and do that, and I'm going to trust you to go and do it. I'm not going to micromanage you. Yeah. I'm going to trust you to come back to me. And if I'm going to trust as well that if you don't know the answer – you will go and seek a solution and come back to me with that. Yeah. Like, you know, don't micromanage, trust your people. Like, no. and, and I think that also comes back to the fact is if you hire well, let's, let's be blunt here, folks, you're not going to go and hire a dumb person. <coughs> you're yeah. going to try and hire the smartest <laughs> we, we person. Try not that, to, yeah. yeah, you try not to. You're <laughs> going to try and hire the smartest person. If you're tr hiring for the right skills, trust that they can go and do it. Yeah. You know, that, that's really big. And the B that surrounds all of that is what I call boundaries. Mm. So the last thing is, for everybody in their team to know what their job is, where their boundaries start and stop. And that's really important when you've got a number of people working on the same type of stuff because we want to build experts in the team but we also want them to know where someone else's accountability lies and theirs doesn't because then they're in a space that they feel they can grow in but not feel like they have to do it all. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it's it's clarity is is a big thing. I mean, we mm. see it often, especially on on you know boots um, bootstrap businesses. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we can get in the habit of okay, I'm I'm kicking this off with me and maybe one other person. Maybe it's a solopreneur type of deal, right? So we wear all the hats at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then it becomes it can be one of those things that it becomes a little harder to release control of the thing Correct. because it becomes your baby. Now it's your, like, yeah. it's my baby. Nobody misses with my baby. Um, but it's, that's the same thing that, you know, usually keeps uh, businesses bottlenecked, right? Yep. So the more that you're adding on <clears throat> people and processes and systems, the more you need to reset those boundaries yeah, every time. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want it done right, you got to do it. You know, got to do it myself. Yeah. Like, no. If you want like it done, you get like, in the hammer and go taking six months yeah, to do yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Didn't work. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was completely demoralized. I was like, how can people like, live off of real estate? Like, you only make a thousand bucks. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's in not, six not months. Not doable. <laughs> in six months. Like, the math doesn't add up. Uh, but no, it's, uh, and I, th I think a lot of it, you know, it it's becomes to, to the point of, of um, awareness and, and emotional um, intelligence, right? Yeah. Like, where are we at? A lot of times, it, like, we feel like we're releasing, but are we really? Or is it, you know, is it, uh, is it a matter of, um, you know, fear to empower somebody else to come in and then do good for you, mm. for your business, uh, do good oh, for God themselves? God forbid they come in and do better than what you did. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, Shock horror. <laughs> that happens, people. <laughs> isn't it, isn't it crazy? But I think, you know, a lot of the conversations that happen, even at, you know, at, as, as you, you start moving up the ladder and then, you know, having, you know, accomplishes or accomplishments under your belt and all that, um, you know, those those fears are real. Like they're 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 tangible fears. And if we don't if we're not careful, like we're going to plug those fears into the team yeah. uh, as insecurities. Right. As lack of trust. Yeah. Uh, as lack of empowerment. And and really you create this codependency um, of of um, of you having to give approval to every, you know, for every single little thing before people take action. What happens? You become the bottleneck. Yep. 
Yeah. Couldn't agree more. <clears throat> Couldn't yeah, agree more. Yeah, I have I have three principles that I follow, and these go across. You know, the, my my companies. The first one is transparency uh, across the board, right? With clients, with team members. I mean, that includes feedback, conversations. You know, where are we at? Yep. Uh, you know, numbers is one thing, but but uh, but you, human trans- transparency is also you know in there. Okay, we got to be honest about the type of relationship that we have. We got to be honest about how we feel. You know, <clears throat> priorities, all that stuff. Yep. The second one. Uh, um, is extreme ownership, um, and and I, I I do extreme ownership because that takes into accountability, right? Yeah. Like okay, I'm, uh, this is my lane. This is what I own. Um, you you were talking about boundaries, right? It, and everything everything that I have um, a build has you know clear and set uh, you know tracks per se, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> not because people can't operate from you know in different different roles or whatnot. But when they, like, for example, if I have the same person doing a couple of different tasks, they understand that the roles are different. It's two different lanes that they're jumping back and forth Correct. from, right? So yep. there's always, you know, clarity, right? But, but there's, you know, extreme ownership in what's happening. Like, whatever happens here, it's... You're in that lane, you, you are That's it. It's a you thing. It's a you problem. You go to town. You make it grow. Um, you know, if it's if it's not great, it's your fault. If it's great, it's also your fault. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it really comes down to that kind of stuff. And then the last, uh, the third one is people over profits. Uh, and we were not in the business of screwing people over to make yeah, money, right? So 100%. people over profits. And I mean, like having those those uh, um, principles stick out in everything that we do um, is, is a great thing because the team starts taking, you know, that too hard, right? Okay, cool. I mean, is this, you know, people over profits issue? Is this, you know, are we negotiating and are we just, you know, going, you know, further than we need to go here, you know, with this person? Yeah. Like, and and it just kind of it starts to to call out right how the the entire company starts to behave and and how you reflect on them right i love it yeah. i think they're brilliant <clears throat> yeah and they they're easy for everyone to remember they're easy for people to subscribe to yeah. and they're easy for you to measure yeah so oh, there we go again yeah, <laughs> so yeah they're that's excellent i love yeah. that no um thank you man it, it, it's it's man it's been a such a great conversation and and it's interesting to see right like you know across the pond you know different you know cultural backgrounds and everything and, and yet still you know things are you know, things are so similar yep right it's not Absolutely. it's not really rocket science it's about jumping in there and figuring things out as we go we usually you know jump and build a plane it's not going to be I, I i haven't met a prodigy who had it all figured out you know figured me out neither right and when you meet them tell me who yeah. but i don't think in our lifetime we'll see that happen yeah yeah, yeah exactly so so um i don't know ai is crazy and it's moving fast <laughs> but uh, but you you know it's it's um it's it's really interesting to have this this uh this take because it's entrepreneurship i think it's one of those things that uh that although it can kick our ass like we we have the tendency to fall in love with it once we yeah once we really know it 100 percent. Right? i always say even in the tough times i can never see myself going back and working for someone else that's that's my definition of yeah I'm like a, put I'm me a, underground now i'm done I'm a broken employee. <laughs> yeah yeah it, 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 it wouldn't work no it wouldn't work for <laughs> me either work. someone's gonna tell me what to do it ain't gonna work <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna work uh alicia thank you so much um thank you if Rafael. somebody wants to get a hold of you maybe you know pick your brain on yep. on more you know more on the stuff that we talked about maybe find out about your companies uh jv partner with you guys bring you some land deals or all of that they can um, yeah Where's absolutely the find it? they yeah. can reach out to um, email so alicia at supercharged offers.com spelled a-l-i-c-i-a no one ever gets it right but you did the other day because we were talking about the whole and, spanish and, interpretation. i said it in spanish see yes. you guys are the mexicans of the, the, we are, the, the, we the are. other side of the world i'm telling you so alicia at supercharged offers.com <laughs> you even say it in spanish oh do i <laughs> yeah Alicia, that's Alicia. how you say it in Spanish, yeah. Uh, or they could just go to superchargedoffers.com. We've got some free tools on our website for people to download a current assessment of their whole business, so their marketing, mm. their data, their their strategy, all of that stuff and what, what might be some things they might need to look at. Um, they can follow us on Facebook at superchargedoffers.com or give me a call, 888-538-5478. Wow, savage. All right, phone number dropping and everything. <laughs> Alicia, thank <Boom>. you. <laughs> Bam, somebody give her a mic. <laughs> Um, I think, I've got one here. Yeah, <laughs> don't drop that one. <laughs> no, I won't drop this one. <laughs> no, but thank you so much once thank again. You. It's been a pleasure. Uh, blast of a conversation. I look forward to uh, to seeing you. We're in the same mastermind, we so we're going to be spending some time here in the next. Absolutely, few months. can't so, wait. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for having me here and thanks for tuning in, folks. Yeah. With that being said, family, take advantage of that. Follow the links. We're going to drop all the contact info in the show notes. And uh, with that, I am uh, going to leave you and say stay focused. You got this. See you on the next one. Let's go. Bye.